Um, you know, we don't get the win. Um, unfortunately, that's a too common of a theme for this team in this year. But I am, uh, I will acknowledge and recognize the fact that I thought our guys showed more fight today than they had in the last two games. Uh, we don't start the game down 17 to two. Uh, our starters gave us a chance to be in the game. Thought they competed on the defensive end. We couldn't really score the ball in the first half. Uh, but I believe it gets down to what we call the fourth war around the eight minute mark where it's 14 to 14, right? Typical UVA game, low scoring. And then they go on a 22 to three run. And our inability to score affects us on the defensive end and we can't get stops. And that's too, whole of a, too deep of a hole for us to dig ourselves out of completely. Uh, I thought in the second half, we gave ourselves a chance with some pretty good defensive possessions there. The little run and jump was pretty good. Um, you know, I thought, uh, again, spotty, spotty, not consistent enough. You know, really good teams that are going to um, win games and, and give themselves an opportunity to compete for a tournament championship, an NCAA tournament win, and move forward from there are teams that are going to be consistent on both ends of the floor. They're going to get stops. They're going to be connected every possession. Offensively, they're going to get the ball in the paint. They're going to run their stuff, and they're going to get quality shots. And at times, we did that. We get 44 points in the second half against a really good UVA defense. And uh, But again, our inconsistency and inability on the defensive end uh, to finish every possession hurt us. And so that's where I thought the game was lost. Mike, uh, again, Sid, with a, a pretty huge game, in particular in the second half. Mm -hmm. uh, anything different in, in what you guys were doing with him in, in the second half? And what can you say about just sort of the consistency he's had in scoring the last week or so? Yeah, I mean, you know, we want to play through Sid. I think that uh, Sid has now given us a guy. I wish he was – he came in at 258. We would have been going to him day one. Uh, but credit to him for getting a lot better throughout the season. And, um, you know, we kind of have revamped the offense to play around him, um, to get him the ball inside. Um, UVA is a big post-trap team, and, and I saw them literally – Coach Bennett had to call it off a couple times because Sid did a – an admirable job taking care of the ball. He gets three assists. He does get three turnovers, but he's scoring the ball around the basket. He's a high percentage guy on the block, in particular the right block. Uh, but he did a good job on the left block as well. So it's good to see him offensively playing the way that he did. He gets six offensive rebounds. That's phenomenal. Where Sid has to help us, and, it, and this has kept him off the floor in the past, is on the defensive end. And he knows that, and uh, our coaching staff has to continue to help him understand. Uh, I think he exerts like so many young players, so much energy on the offensive end that he doesn't leave enough to defend. And uh, he's got to find a way to, to find that balance. Micah, as crazy as the last month has been, all the things this team has been through, do you just kind of now wipe the slate clean and say, hey, guys, we got one chance now. We go to Brooklyn. Yeah, couldn't wait it. to say we're 0-0. Couldn't wait to say it, <laughs> right? Which we are and everybody else is. And, you know, one day at a time, it looks like the odds are we'll play a team that we beat on Tuesday whether it be Boston College or Georgia Tech or Pitt or NC State, you know, we beat all of those teams at least once. So hopefully that emboldens us and, and gives us a boost, understanding that it is a brand new season. We're getting away uh, up to Brooklyn. Everybody's excited about tournament time. We get an opportunity to go win a ball game on Tuesday uh, against a good team, but a team that we, again, most likely have beaten. And we'll see what happens from there. Uh, Coach Malik Williams coming off uh, being suspended last game played uh, what 34 minutes today played heavy minutes today. Mm -hmm. um, what did you think about how he bounced back and what did you think about his performance today? Yeah, I thought he was solid. I thought he was solid. I thought that uh, you know he did he did some really good things out there. Obviously, being an experienced guy, uh, he adds an element that some other guys just can't bring. In, in particular, on the defensive end, where his best basketball is usually played. Um, you know, he, hopefully, we can get the same energy and commitment and investment and all of the good stuff that comes right in here uh, tomorrow and Tuesday. Um, I believe that he's a kid that wants to go up here and like everybody else, win a game on Tuesday and go one day at a time. And if Malik is truly committed to that, which I, I pray and hope that he is, I think that he is, then he'll help us um, by being on the floor. He's a guy who's been out there before. Um, but we all, not just him, but we all as a program, as, as, as in particular our young men, we got to do the right things. We have to communicate with each other the right way. We have to respect one another. We have to be about the right things the next two days. We have to re-familiarize ourselves with who it, whoever we play tomorrow to be more of a mental day. And then we'll get after each other a little bit on Monday, and then we'll get on that bus, and we'll get up to Brooklyn and see what happens.
As an interim, how conscious are you of trying to keep the guys together for the next coach and keep them invested in the program? Uh, tricky question. Uh, honestly, Tim, I, I don't – I'm just worried about the now. Uh, I obviously care about the program. Louisville has been great to me, the city, the, pro, the uh, university. Josh Hurd is a phenomenal AD. I hope they don't get that one wrong. I hope they retain Josh Hurd. I'm not concerned about myself in any of this. I, I really believe that promotion comes from God, and, I, and I'm a good guy, and I'm invested in what I'm doing, and, and I'll, I'll land on my feet somewhere. I want what's best for these kids, uh, whether, they, whether that's here or elsewhere. I want what's best for them. Uh, but right now, I just want to be totally consumed with Brooklyn. And whatever happens after that happens, and I hope that, that people make the right decisions and, and anybody that's here wants to be here and they invest with everything that they have because that's certainly what I plan on doing wherever I am. Mike, how, how difficult is it to go into a tournament? I know you're going to take it one game at a time in a tournament, mm -hmm. but you'd have to win five games mm -hmm. to do what you want to do. Yep. And you guys from one day to the next have just mm -hmm. not been a re very reliable team. I'm excited about it. I mean, the last tournament we were in, we won. You know, and here's the thing. You get to go to Brooklyn. You get to compete in the ACC tournament. You kidding me? Like, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. I want to find out who we play, like, right now. And I want to get home and, you know, uh, find out who that is and, and get to work and, again, get caught up on who they are offensively and defensively and get with our staff and figure out how we can scheme and, and, and tweak some things, you know, in the tournament. Coaches usually game plan a little differently, and they throw some wrinkles at you that you haven't seen. So I'm excited about that. I, hey, again, man, like I'm living the dream. I'm living the dream. It's a rough dream. Sometimes it's a nightmare, right? But it's it's still it's still something I never expected, man, to be here. And I'm I'm going to get every minute out of it, every single minute. Will you hit that tonight? Like, will you be video tonight when you once you know the second you know, or will you yep. dive right in? I'll get a meal, have a bourbon and a cigar, and then I'll get right on that laptop. <laughs> Mike, um, you only had 17 in the first half. You only had 43 the last game, and you got 44 in the second half. Mm -hmm. What did you guys do in the second half, and what from that can you do you want to see continue uh, as you go to Brooklyn? I thought we moved the ball pretty well. We executed some of our sets. Again, UVA is a really tough team, in particular their ball screen defense. They do a good job of hedging hard. But I thought that our guards made some plays, got the ball to the short roll. We threw the ball inside the sid. We executed uh, a couple set plays that we recently put in, and um, thought we did some good things. We, we got a, when we did get stops, we were able to run a little bit. You know, we missed a couple transition threes. We, we could have easily had over 50 points. We had some really good looks that didn't go in. Uh, hopefully, those go in in Brooklyn. You know, elaborate a little bit on on what you've changed to try to go through Sydney more. Honestly, uh, just a few set plays, trying to get him the ball uh, in his sweet spot on the baseline or on the block. Uh, right block is, is where he's best because he gets to get to his left hand, but he can be really effective on the left block as well, going to the base. Now, he's a tough cover. He's a strong kid. And when you want to wrestle with him, it's probably not the best idea. Um, when, when, you, when you trap him, he's also shown that he can pass the ball. So uh, he's a tough cover. And when he gets on the offensive glass the way he did, he was, it, it's, it's good stuff. Good things happen for us. Coach, I know you mentioned, you know, not, not maybe not the last, the best efforts the last couple times out, but you like the fight today. One of the things about this team, it seems like the spirit has mm -hmm. been there all year, even though, you know, with all the losses, only having just the one win down this last stretch. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk about the character of the team as a whole? It just seems like yeah. their spirits have stayed up and they've continued to give that full out effort. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm proud of the kids for that, you know, because it has wavered the last couple of days. But. Right after the transition, I mean, for this team to compete the way that we did against Duke and Carolina and Carolina twice, in fact, and, you know, a lot of close games with the exception of the last two in the Syracuse game. And I think that that does say a lot about, you know, our, our kids and, and their character. And uh, I want that to be a constant every single day. That is wavered. You know, everybody, when you go through something like this, it's easy for doubt to set in. It's easy for your confidence to drop. It's easy to point the finger at the guy next to you. That's human nature. And I've challenged them as much as, as best I can to resist that, to resist the temptation to like be normal. Let's fight. And our worst moment in the heart of the, this team has gone through more than any other team. I keep saying that in the country, and it's so true. This no team in Louisville basketball's history has gone through what this team has gone through. So what? Stand in and fight and compete and be at your best in the worst moments. That's the challenge, and that's what I want. 
until the last minute. Anything else? Thank you.